Shortly after liftoff, the rocket begins a pitch over to attain the proper flight path while minimizing the dynamic pressure it experiences during flight. Vulcan then reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound. With the ability to add two, four, or six solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, Vulcan can be precisely configured to take any mission to space, from low Earth orbit to Pluto and beyond. These boosters augment the rocket's total thrust at liftoff, adding approximately 460,000 pounds of thrust per SRB. With their propellant expired approximately 90 seconds into ascent, the SRBs burn out, followed by jettison. Jettison time is variable, occurring between 100 and 150 seconds after liftoff, depending on mission requirements. Vulcan's guidance system then activates to steer towards the precise target in space. First stage flight continues as the rocket crosses the Kármán line, entering space. With the majority of propellant expended as Vulcan fights against the force of gravity, the BE-4 engines shut down and the booster stage separates. With the rocket now weighing less than 10% of what it did at liftoff, dual RL-10C engines on ULA's Centaur upper stage ignite. Spacecraft are encapsulated inside a 5.4-meter diameter payload fairing which provides a protective environment during ascent. Following Centaur engine ignition, the payload fairing is jettisoned, and the mission continues to its final destination. Once we lift off, viewers watching the launch from Florida and points east may be able to see Vulcan in flight. To get a closer look at this visibility map, check out at ULA launch on social media. Roger. One fifty nine. Vehicle internal. One fifty five. Launch sequencer start. One forty. Launch enable. One thirty five. FTS armed. T minus 90 seconds. The launch vehicle, ground systems, payload, and eastern range are go for launch. For those of you just tuning in, I'm Chris Veltri, joining you for today's live coverage of USSF 106 atop ULA's Vulcan rocket. At this time, the team is not working any issues, and we're proceeding towards liftoff at 8:56 p.m. Eastern time. T minus one minute. Report range status. Range green. Forty five. Vulcan tanks at step three. Thirty four. 30. EE4 start box, go. 28. Verify UCS, reduce for launch. Verify. 20. Status check. Go Vulcan. Go Centaur. Go SF-106. 15. 10. T minus 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We have ignition. 1. And liftoff of United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket carrying USSF-106 from the United States Space Force, continuing ULA's soaring legacy in national security space launch with the innovative Vulcan rocket. Thrust, half mile in altitude. Completed our pitch and yaw program. Body rates turn to zero. He's gone to close loop control. And we complete our roll program. Three miles in altitude, half mile downrange. And Mach 1, Vulcan is supersonic. Vehicle's traveling at 1,500 miles per hour, right down the center of the range track. 
max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Engine parameters continue to look good. Hydraulics good. Five miles downrange. You are hearing Daniel Brunson providing launch vehicle ascent data. Good indication of SRB burnout. Preparing for SRB jettison. B4 is continuing to burn nominally. Good indication of SRB separation. B4 is entering its first throttle bucket. And guidance enabled. We've been able to close up steering. At this point, we just heard now confirmation of solid rocket booster jettison. These four motors augmented the thrust of the main vehicle engines at liftoff, giving the Vulcan rocket an extra boost on its journey to geosynchronous orbit. 27 miles downrange, continues right down the center of the range track, traveling at 3,200 miles per hour. Engine continues to burn nominally, body rate's looking good. We've got activation of the RCS pyro valves on the upper stage. Thirty-four miles in altitude, approaching four thousand miles per hour. Body rates continue to look as expected. Passing 80 miles downrange, Vulcan continues right down the center of the range track. Passing through 45 miles in altitude, 107 miles downrange. Engine parameters continue to look healthy. We're now a quarter of our original liftoff weight, 169 miles downrange, 56 miles in altitude. Good activation of the upper stage PU motors. Vehicles traveling 8,400 miles per hour. This is Vulcan Mission Control at T plus 4 minutes and 30 seconds. We're about 30 seconds away from our next mission events, booster engine cutoff and booster separation, followed by start of the main engine and jettison of payload fairing. Let's return to Daniel Brunson. And we've completed boost phase chill down. Prop on now, see. And good indication of shutdown. Good indication of center separation. We've got pre-start on H2 and O2. And good start on the upper stage engines. Two good all temps. Good indication of PLF jettison. Sent our PU set to open loop control. Body rate's looking good. This is Vulcan Mission Control at T, T plus 5 minutes and 45 seconds. We just heard flight commentator Daniel Brunson confirm the successful completion of the early milestones in today's flight, and all systems continue to operate nominally. 
As the mission continues, let's take a look at the important work done by the Space Force's Space Systems Command. Satellites in orbit around our planet provide the critical infrastructure we use to defend and protect the security and prosperity of this world we all share. But space is no longer a benign environment. Adversaries and near-peer nations are actively working to dominate the most critical battleground of our day. At Space Systems Command, the time to act is now. The race is on. Our adversary is out there. They are going to work every day, trying to work harder, smarter, faster than us. But we are making sure that that does not happen. The Guardians, Airmen, and partners of Space Systems Command are working with unstoppable urgency to innovate and act now. Delivering solutions to emerging threats creating resilient space architectures we can all rely on, especially during times of crisis and conflict. The fight could happen tonight, it could happen tomorrow, it could happen in a couple of years, but we need to start innovating now, and that's exactly what we're doing. For Space Systems Command, working faster means breaking from the status quo, exploiting existing space architectures and capabilities in creative new ways. Working with commercial industry, innovators and tech startups, and allied nations to exploit, buy, and build. To deliver better, faster, and more affordably. We are advancing the space architecture that we have up there right now, making sure that it's optimal, making sure that we get new space architecture set up, prototyping, experiments, to ensure that we can outpace the enemy tomorrow. To maintain our lead in space, Space Systems Command has embraced a new culture, empowering its people to race forward, speak up, and connect with industry in unprecedented new ways. Our people are agile. They continue our partnerships. They are working collaboratively day after day in order to contribute to the big warfighter purpose. Space is a team sport. We have to work together to provide integrated, resilient capability and speed in order to fight through any contingency crisis. Space Systems Command is moving fast to maintain U.S. superiority in space. Running a marathon of sprints. Thinking differently. Acting boldly. Empowering at every level. To make space work for us all. At Space Systems Command, space starts here. As we wrap up today's live coverage, I'd like to say thank you for tuning in to today's flight. What a beautiful evening we had in Florida for launch today. We got to hear from ULA's president and CEO, Tori Bruno, about how Centart is truly one of a kind, and we witnessed boost phase for Vulcan's inaugural national security mission. For more information about ULA, the Vulcan rocket, and USSF 106 updates, please visit ULALaunch.com and subscribe to ULA's YouTube channel. And plan to join us for our next launch, an Atlas V rocket launching Kuiper 3 for Amazon. As we sign off this evening, we'll take another look at today's liftoff. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. We have ignition. One. And liftoff of United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket carrying USSF-106 for the United States Space Force, continuing ULA's soaring legacy in national security space launch with the innovative Vulcan rocket. Thrust. Half mile in altitude. Completed our pitch and yaw program. Body rates to